All right, so tonight uh, for Young Living Oils Online, we're going to be talking about essential oils for pets 101. And I'm presenting tonight, I'm Sarah McCaslin, and I'm our resident cat lady. All right, so I want to start off with some examples of essential oils and their use with animals. Now, none of these statements should take the place of advice from your vet, okay? But these are just some of the uses. Um, oddly enough, essential oils can even be used with insects. Placing a cotton ball soaked with frankincense in a beehive can provide immune system benefits to bees. Now, I never thought of essential oils and insects. Of course, my instinct usually when I see insects is not friendly. So, um, now, kit baiting kittens that have just been born and they're not doing so well, they can be helped by diffusing rose and frankincense or, and it should say, or joy. Um, diffusing it in an open room with the kittens, and that can help a little bit with uh, kind of reviving them a bit. Now, dogs with ulcers can benefit from being petted with digize on their owner's hands. Hmm. You know, if you're familiar with Young Living Oils, you know digize helps with, dig uh, supports the digestive system, and it also supports digestive health in animals. Now, this one I thought was interesting, too. If your bird needs an antihistamine, try one drop of Melissa essential oil in one liter of water, shake well, and provide it to your bird as drinking water. Mm. And that uh, apparently has some antihistamine benefits for birds. Very good. If you've got an animal with heat stroke, you can try applying peppermint to their ear flaps, foot pads, and over their femoral artery to help them cool down while you get, uh, or on the way to get them, medical treatment. I know that people use peppermint oil for similar purposes, and it works for animals also. And in fact, cattle and large animals enjoy peppermint oil added to their water, about three to five drops per 50 to 100 gallons of water. This one I thought was particularly interesting for kennel cough. You can try diffusing thieves, purification, or RC in an open room with the pets for up to 24 hours a day and then clean with the thieves cleaner. Um, we, we think of thieves as uh, cleaning for, you know, human, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, human habitations, but also for pets and to help prevent the spread of disease among animals. Now, if uh, you have a horse suffering from colic, which can be fatal for horses, while the vet's on the way, you can try petting three to five drops of peace and calming or lavender on their muzzle and belly every 20 minutes as needed. And that is an essential oil treatment for a colic in horses. So, they can be used with all kinds of animals. And I found this absolutely fascinating when I began researching. Now, I'd like to talk about my personal experience with essential oils in pets. So this is my cat, uh, Zena. Uh, she's two years old. She's a domestic short hair tabby cat and was diagnosed last year with feline hypers. Now, there are a lot of different symptoms that vary uh, with different cats. Her symptoms were extreme nervousness, uh, chewing on herself, clawing at her ears, just clawing at them, and her eyes being fully dilated, even more than you see in that picture. I've seen her eyes even more dilated than that. And her worst attack, she had run around and around the house until she collapsed in the floor and was panning like a dog would with her tongue hanging out of her mouth. That freaked me out really bad. Well, the vet prescribed... Uh, for starters, feel away spray, which did seem to help, but said that if the condition worsened, we were looking at something like kitty Prozac. Um, I'm aware that some other uh, some other individuals that have a cat with feline hyperesthesia, uh, they have to take anti-seizure medications, and I hate that for my little cat. So the other day, she wasn't doing so well. She was having a rough time. We've had a lot of thunderstorms in the area. She doesn't react to loud noises. We had uh, people on either side doing their lawns. She doesn't like the sounds of lawn equipment. That makes her nervous. So she was having a really rough day. Um, the picture you see on the right-hand side in the bottom is Zena during her rough time. Her eyes are dilated. She looks distressed. Uh, as her owner, that's uh, kind of a distressed look. So um, 
I decided to try a drop of lavender in the palm of my hand. Um, I rubbed it in and waited for, waited for a little while for most of it to be absorbed in my own system because I didn't know how Zena would react to it. And then I petted her. That's all I did. I petted the cat like I normally would after I caught the cat. <laughs> that was a challenge. So I petted her, and then you can see in the picture at the top, a few hours later, her eyes look more normal. Her face, still features look more relaxed. She was calm. She was uh, laying there watching squirrels outside and was no longer jumpy and nervous. So um, I was amazed at the effect that it had on her. In fact, just a little while ago, uh, I had to use it on her. Today, she was nervous and jumping. Everything she was jumping. And uh, I used some on her. And now she's over here in the chair nearby me sound asleep. So that's my personal experience. And if you know how much I love my cat, if you know me, you know I adore that cat and I would not risk her health. And so I researched this thoroughly before I tried it on her. So the question that I had before I did this, are essential oils actually safe for pets? Well, I didn't notice, I didn't know they were until I noticed that Young Living had some pet specific blends. So I started looking into it, and I purchased a book off Amazon. Uh, you can see the picture here. It's the Animal Desk Reference Essential Oils for Animals, and it's written by a veterinarian, uh, Dr. Melissa Shelton. And in her own experience and training as a vet, she has proven to herself that essential oils are safe for pets when used responsibly. Okay, So, yes, you can use essential oils on your pets if you are careful and you follow some basic safety protocols for your pets. So, what kind of animals respond to essential oils? Well, when I started looking at the list, I was really surprised. Of course, we can figure dogs and cats, birds, including everything from chickens to exotic birds, rabbits, guinea pigs, chinchillas, hamsters, ferrets, mice, rats, reptiles, and other exotics. I've never thought of essential oils and snakes, but they can be used, uh, they're beneficial to reptiles. Uh, they can be used with horses and their feed, can be added to their water, and even air diffusion. Um, livestock, again, can be added to their feed or water. Fish. There actually are essential oil benefits for fish, where you add the uh, essential oils to their aquarium. And an interesting one I ran across was elephants. <laughs> you, uh, you can put essential oils in their soaking water. There's even a raindrop technique for elephants. So all kinds of animals uh, respond positively to the proper use of essential oils. Okay, now I apologize. As usual, um, PowerPoint, when you have two content on a slide, it always ends up acting weird when you try to have it appear one at a time. So I'm sorry for that glitch, but moving on. Young living essential oils are the safest for use with animals because of their level of purity. No other essential oil on the market has the level of purity that they do. Um, Dr. Shelton, the vet uh, that wrote the book that I purchased, will only use young living on animals because she knows that it's the safest one. Now, just like with little kids, the use of essential oils in animals has to be done with care. Now, one example, um, if an oil shouldn't be used on a child younger than 18 months, then kind of a rule of thumb is it shouldn't be used on an animal that's younger than six months. Now, if an oil comes with a warning that it shouldn't be used on a pregnant woman, common sense tells us, yeah, you probably don't want to use it on a pregnant animal either. Okay. Now, you can use essential oils on pregnant animals. There are essential oils that are safe. But what we're saying here is if it says not to be used on pregnant women, there's no reason to use it on a pregnant animal. There are other oils with equivalent effects. Okay, so if you decide to try an essential oil on your pet, do like I did. Start light. I started with one drop, okay? Then increase the amount of oil you use as needed, okay? And just like you don't suddenly change your pet's diet, like if you have a dog and you suddenly change their dog food to a totally new dog food, you are asking for disaster in your home. You don't um, just suddenly come at your pet with 10 different uh, essential oils that you start using all at the same time, okay? Uh, again, use some common sense with this. It's not, 
It's not difficult to use them with animals. It's just a matter of using some scents. Also, it's best to start with diluted oils. Okay. Now, animals have a much higher, much heightened sense of smell compared to us. Um, the book I was reading by um, Dr. Shelton was talking about bloodhounds can pick up on uh, the scent coming from uh, skin cells that have fallen off your arm, skin flakes that have fallen off your arm. They can track that scent. Their sense of smell is that strong. So you should not go up here, pet, open the bottle of essential oils and stick it at them for them to smell. That's going to make them not want anything to do with essential oils. They're going to have a, a, a tendency to avoid them. So you don't want to do that. Keep in mind that they're sensitive to the scent. Now, one interesting thing is that the oils will travel to the part of the body that needs it the most. Okay, the vet gave an example of a great dame that she used just a tiny amount of essential oil on, and she rubbed it, I believe, on his shoulders, and he started rubbing his face on the ground. Well, when she checked out his face, he had a lot of scratches and irritation that had already been on his face, and so the essential oils were working in that area where the scratches and irritation were. And she noted that she had to use um, a much weaker make blend of essential oils on the Great Dane than she did on, I think, the Chihuahua she treated a few hours later. So it varies. You can't just say, well, this animal weighs this much. They can take a whole lot more. It varies with the pet. Okay. So um, some animals can exhibit a detoxification response similar to humans. And... Uh, I already mentioned them having a very keen sense of smell, so we do need to be careful uh, not to, uh, for example, with diffuser. If you're going to diffuse essential oils around your pet, uh, let's say you're going to put them in the bathroom with the essential oil diffuser for a while, try sticking your own face over that diffuser and smelling how strong the scent is coming out of it before you leave your pet in there with it. Um, if it's uncomfortable to you, it's going to be very uncomfortable to your pet. Okay. Now, this is what I thought was really cool. Studies have shown that the hair follicles on pets enhance how animals absorb essential oils, both from direct contact with the essential oils coming in contact with the hair follicles, as well as diffusion from the essential oils being in the air. So that's why um, petting application is preferred uh, for direct application. Okay, now, if a pet does react to oils, don't try to wash it off with soap and water. Your best bet is a some type of a fatty vegetable oil, um, preferably uh, the V6 oil that you can get from Young Living. Whatever you do, don't try to help them by adding more oil or a different type of essential oil. So again, don't wash it with soap and water if they're reacting. Um, the vet pointed out, the vet that I was reading, Dr. Shelton, pointed out even in a worst case scenario, even creamer from a restaurant has enough fatty uh, material in it to help ease the discomfort from that reaction. So, all right, so let's talk a little bit about how you administer essential oils to pets, okay? Um, topically, there is a raindrop technique for, uh, there's an equine raindrop technique, an avian raindrop technique, a kitty raindrop technique, <laughs> and <laughs> of course, there's a dog raindrop technique. Some dogs are so sensitive to essential oils, they have to have the kitty raindrop technique. <laughs> but I was amazed there was raindrop techniques for all these different types of uh, pets. In fact, if you go on Young Living's Flickr account, one of their albums is equine raindrop technique, where they have pictures where they're doing the raindrop technique on horses. So that's one. My personal favorite so far is petting because I like to pet my cat anyway, and she's right over here to my left. Uh, but the petting technique, when you have the essential oils on your hands, either diluted or neat, and then you pet the, pet the animal, and in some cases, direct application. There's also diffusion. There's air diffusion, where you have uh, the essential oil on a, a cotton ball or something similar in the room near your, uh, near your pet. There's water diffusion with the ultrasonic diffusers like you can get through uh, Young Living and other uh, manufacturers, but uh, just a regular diffuser. There's also human diffusion where you, the human, put the essential oils on you and then go hang out around your pet. That's an interesting idea. 
Now, in some extreme cases, there is tinting. Like if you've got an extremely ill animal that you're treating with essential oils, uh, you can put them in their uh, in their cage or in their carrier, and uh, and then form a tent with a sheet or something and a diffuser. If you do that, you need to keep a close eye on the animal and make sure they're not reacting to too strong diffusion. If they're coughing or panting or acting uncomfortable. You want to uh, give them a break from it and uh, don't use as strong a as strong a dose of the essential oils. So topical. There's diffusion and then there's ingestion. Some animals do well with adding water, uh, adding it to their water or food. For example, livestock and chickens. Uh, apparently, cats not so much. <laughs> um, now, so you have to be careful with animals that like to bathe in their water. The example was given that you don't put peppermint oil in a snake's drinking water in case the snake decides to take a bath in it. That peppermint oil is going to be awfully cold. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, another thing, direct oral use, where you actually apply it to the gums or in your pet's mouth, the vet herself only reserves that for cases where the animal is too ill to take it in any other way. It's just really not recommended, especially with the hot oils like uh, cinnamon bark or thieves. So that's uh, some different ways of administering oils to your pets. Now I'm just scratching the surface on this. This is just kind of to inform people about what can be done as far as pets and essential oils. So again, there's a lot more detail out there. Now this dog is getting the doggy raindrop technique at one of the Young Living uh, training sessions. Okay, you might recognize the uh, down here at the bottom, the box with the uh, raindrop oils and one very happy looking puppy dog. One of the oils uh, that you can use on your pets, like I did, is lavender. Now, here's something important. If you're going to use lavender on your pet, it's got to be the highest quality. Of all the essential oils on the market today, lavender is the one that is the most adulterated. It uh, can have all kinds of my products in it, all kinds of things mixed in with it. Uh, it might be a fragrance oil being represented as an essential oil. So if you're going to use lavender on your pet that you love or on an animal that you care about, I highly recommend you stick to Young Living because that's the 100% therapeutic grade. Okay, Lavender has a calming effect on animals like it does on humans. Okay, uh, Like it did on my little kitty cat, Zena. Even got her eyes undilated for a while. It's believed to be helpful with skin conditions that a lot of animals struggle with, like ringworm, and uh, can speed up the healing of burns and frostbite, as well as skin irritation. So uh, one of the uh, common problems in the summertime is uh, dogs getting their little pads of their feet burnt on concrete or asphalt that's too warm. Warm. I saw a lady walking her dog down the street uh, yesterday and was horrified. You could tell that dog was very uncomfortable. It was like 85 to 90 degrees out. So this can be used to help with that irritation. Right. Uh, now, Stress Away is a very commonly used blend with animals. Now, this is the uh, horse receiving the equine raindrop technique. Okay, I'm not familiar with horses, so I don't know if that horse looks happy or not. I'm probably looking at the wrong end to tell, but uh, <laughs> it helps with promoting relaxation in people and reducing tension, and it works on animals. One place that it works really well is when you have to transport animals. Animals get nervous when they're taken out of a familiar place. I have a full-on battle with my cat, Zena, trying to just get her in the carrier. It takes at least 20 minutes and leather gloves up to my elbows. So I'm planning on trying that next time she has to go to the vet. But this is one place where essential oils can be very beneficial. If you don't want to mess with essential oils to take the place, you, you, you're thinking, I don't want to do something, you know, to take the place of medicine my vet prescribes. That's fine. We, no one's expecting you to, and we certainly aren't promoting that. But you can just focus on essential oils for your pet's emotional well-being. So this can be good when transporting animals. Um, it helps with things like anxiety, colic, muscle spasms, and cramping in animals. And one example that was given was applying stress away to the muzzle of a horse. Um, and again, that has a, a calming effect. 
And I would think personally that this might be good if uh, someone is in the uh, works with rescuing pets, you know, where you've got pets that have been abused or pets that have been abandoned and they're maybe not uh, well socialized. I would think this might be very beneficial for that, at least something to something to think about. And I sometimes diffuse stress away for Xena. Uh, and it, it seems to work. Um, I'll be in the bedroom and have it in the bathroom with the bathroom doors open and the cat's in the bedroom with me and in a little while she falls asleep. And, and she was probably, if I'm doing it, she's acting very nervous. She's probably um, running around, chewing on her toes and clawing at her ears. So, But it seems to help with my little cat, Xena. Okay. Now, another uh, commonly used essential oil with animals. And again, I'm giving some examples just to kind of help you, help everybody get an idea of what the potential is, is lemon. All right. Lemon is essential oil. This is one of the safest essential oils to use on animals. If you have any qualms about essential oils, this one is the safest. It works well for urinary tract infections, digestive issues, and it also works for anxiety also. Um, it all, now, this is what's cool. It helps to cleanse the air to reduce the transmission of disease between animals. I thought that was very interesting. I hadn't thought of diffusing lemon like that, mm. but... Uh, Again, that's another way that you can use lemon with pets. And according to the vet, Dr. Shelton, if you have an furry or feathered animal come in and they have tree sap or gum or something like that stuck in their fur, you can add some, a few drops of lemon oil to the V6 and it can get that uh, right out. And I have a sneaking suspicion that probably works on kids' hair too. Um, I myself learned a disturbing lesson in first grade that you don't chew a big wad of bubble gum while running with your mouth open. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up with a wad in my hair. <laughs> so um, that might be one to just keep in mind if you have kids around. But, that, you know, that's an interesting use for uh, women. Now, Young Living does have some specific animal products. They used to have an Animal Sense care collection. It's not on their website anymore. I tried to order some of their blend for helping keep your pet calm, and it's been out of stock for a couple of months now. But they have an Animal Sense ointment, uh, and they have a shampoo that is all natural. Um, a lot of uh, times it's suggested that you blend the essential oils with the Animal Sense ointment. They have special blends for pets. I'm still having a hard time tracking down exactly what each blend is for, so I'm still working on that as far as Young Living specific products. But they also, uh, Young Living has the uh, raindrop technique kit, and as I mentioned, there's the kitty raindrop technique, equine raindrop technique, even for birds, a raindrop technique. <laughs> and the raindrop technique uh, kit comes with... Uh, uh, thyme, basil, peppermint, oregano, wintergreen, cypress, and marjoram. And it has two oil blends, Valor and Aroma Seas. And it comes with uh, massage oil, enhanced vegetable oil, and a how-to DVD. So that's uh, some of the specific Young Living products that you might be interested in if you're looking to start using essential oils with your pet. I also highly recommend that book I mentioned at the beginning, the Animal Desk Reference Essential Oil for Pets by uh, veterinarian Melissa Shelton. Okay, so does anyone have any any comments or thoughts or ideas or anything they'd like to discuss? Yeah, Sarah, um, the raindrop technique, I'm familiar with that. And I've actually tried it on my elderly parents. Uh, I didn't know that it was actually available for pets too so is it just the regular raindrop technique that you can use for pets too is that correct okay. um some specific uh some specific essential oils they recommend that you use with it for pets okay which do you know do you happen to know which ones that are specific i don't have my book handy okay okay all right but i can Definitely look that information up. Because I, I actually used, I went through the process, I went through the DVD and did the oils. It, it goes down like their spine, and you have a certain massage technique that's very gentle. 
but it kind of puts these oil, each one of those oils down the spine of, you know, of, of my parents. So I presume it's going to be the same thing for pets. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I'll look that up. I, I'm thinking about trying that on little Zena if she'll hold still long enough. <laughs> no, that 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 is, I guess, the trick to get them to hold still long enough. To yeah, do it. I noticed the pictures that um, Young Living put up for the the training session they had on essential oils and pets. They had all these very mellow looking pets to begin with. <laughs> there were no chihuahuas. <laughs> No offense to Chihuahua owners. Were there any cats? But, no, there were no cats in the pictures. Oh, that's the trick. Yeah, there was a picture of a cat, but he wasn't at the conference. So, but uh, I imagine if they are in a mood to be petted, I'm sure they would certainly enjoy that. And that's a good way, too, also for them to get where they like the essential oils. Very good. Any Very. other comments? or? No, I, I was just really amazed at the number of different pets that, you know, and it, I guess it, make, and it makes absolute sense if it works well for humans and their system, naturally it it would make sense that it would work really well for pets. But I can, I do uh, gather that the smell is a lot more pronounced for them than it is for us. So those were some very good points that I didn't realize. Well, I know with Zena, I left the lavender. I probably five or ten minutes I left it on my hands before I got near with it. And she smelled my hands too. Yeah. Check it out, but then she was like, "Oh well, okay." <laughs> as long as you're not making me smell like pizza, I'm okay. <laughs> you know? Very good. Thank you, Sarah. That was excellent. You're welcome. All right.